is Alfred, and this is Black Dice Gaming. So, today we're going to talk about toxic gamers. You know what, DMs, this one's for you. Um, the thing is, is that as DMs, we have to deal with a lot. We have a lot of questions that are asked to us, a lot of requests that are given to us. Some people are even new. They're afraid to play, or they're, they're scared to do little things, common things. But what makes it even worse is that toxic gamer. The one who really holds everything back. Not just for the party, but even for the new ones. The ones who we are trying to bring into the game to make it as exciting for them as it was for us when we first started. So, today I have four different toxic gamers that I do want to talk about. Um, they come from a multitude of different stories and experiences that were given to me. And um, the first one is the militant political. This is a person that basically comes in banging a drum for whatever cause that they have and making everybody else at the table feel uncomfortable. You know, the one that literally says, if you don't feel, feel follow my view, you're stupid. And I find that to be reprehensible. It's something that um, no one should have to deal with. I mean, the thing is, is in a day, in, in, the, in these days now, we have people, you know, we have, we have the companies that provide us with the gaming material asking us to literally find out what lines people won't cross, to find out what people won't play. Because they're scared, because they're, everything is causing people to already riot and cause problems. So to have someone come in and basically cause problems at your own table, I mean, that's just like someone walking in your front door, kicking over your dog and saying, hey, go get me a beer. You know, it's kind of, un, it's kind of rude. So the second one that I'm going to kind of talk about is the sideliner. Now, the sideliner... <laughs> Let me make things perfectly clear if the game is sidelining already and people are having fun sidelining, by all means, but continue sidelining. That's fine. If you're playing a game that's supposed to take three sessions and it takes them three months, but they're having fun doing it, by all means, let them do it. Let your players play. Don't sideline don't basically railroad them into a spot let them enjoy their little their little adventures but what i'm talking about in a sideliner is the person that after those few weeks the other players are saying come on we want to do something else and this one person is still holding them hostage that tends to get unfair now, there's many times that I've had people say, well, you know, he's holding us back, only to find out that after the person leaves or, you know, decides to do something else, they end up holding themselves back in the process. So, you know what? I'd say take the sideliner as, um, as carefully as possible. Because, I mean, yes, he could be sidelining the game, but maybe they're sidelining themselves in the process. So DMs always be aware of that one. It could be either way. So the third one I'm going to talk about is a cheater. And you're saying, well, Alfred, how can you cheat at Dungeons and Dragons? Easy. Someone's rolling 20s all the time. I'm talking like every time. It's like, oh my God, I'm just having a great day. Can I borrow your dice? Can I use them? Oh, no, no. I don't like people touching my dice. Yeah, use a different set. I'll tell you right now, it is so easy to weight dice down. All it takes is about five seconds in a microwave. But, maybe they're not aware. Maybe they're not aware that their dice are not weighted correctly. Shoot, not all dice are weighted correctly anyway. So if you ask for the person to borrow their dice and they say, Sure, here, feel free. Obviously, they're not a cheater. They understand that... Maybe it's just the dice. So just keep that in mind. 
Another good another good aspect of cheating is the person that takes the dice away before the dungeon master even has a chance to look. So they roll the dice. I'm like, yes, I rolled a twenty. But they took the die away before you could take a look. So how do you know as a DM that that person rolled a twenty? I'll tell you exactly how a DM would know that. Make them re-roll it. Because you know what? You are the arbiter of the world. The world runs through your heart and your mind, not through theirs. All they are are simple characters, just like the great bard stated. The all the world is a stage, and we're just merely actors. So let them be actors instead of the, instead of the stage itself. That's your job. So feel free to tell them, hey, re-roll that die. So the uh, fourth one is um, the unreliable one. This is the person that says, yes, I can't wait to come to the game. That's going to be great. Hey, it's going to start at 6. 7 o'clock rolls around. Hey, guys, I'm sorry I'm late. Okay, you know what? We all have problems. We all show up late from time to time. But then week two, sorry I'm late, guys. Week three, they didn't even show up. Week four, hey, sorry I'm late, guys. Okay, listen, dude. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be very honest with you. If you come in late often for your job or don't show up multiple times, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get fired. So you might want to take that into aspect. I mean, DMs, it's okay to fire your players. There are tons of people that want to play, you know, that, that, that look for an opportunity to be able to play. And if they're unreliable, they don't show up, they don't want to maybe change the time or maybe change the date. Do whatever is possible to help them, but if they're still unreliable, just like any other job, it's time to find other employment elsewhere. Now guys, I'm not saying to kick everybody out. I'll tell you right now, I have been doing this for 20 years, and I have, to my memory, only kicked out one person in my whole 20 years of doing this. This is not a common practice. DMs, just so you know, just because what I say is annoying and is toxic, it's your job to clean up the toxic waste. But that doesn't mean kick them out. Try to, try to deal with them. Try to make them better. I mean, that's the whole aspect. You know, in this world that we live in, all we're trying to do is reach out a hand to make each other better. So don't kick him to the curb. And guys, just as always, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure talking to you. The next time we're going to talk, man, we're going to be talking about the new Unearthed Arcana stuff that is coming out. We're going to be talking about the first one, which is a a new a new subclass for Bard. So guys, please come back and see me. And as always, happy trails. Thank you.